Hello and welcome back to another episode of Ramble SMP. Today we're starting back here at the Piglin, Zombified Piglin Farm, uh, because we have run into a little bit of an issue. As you can see, whoops, as you can see I have 169 levels and a half actually and three fourths. Anyway, you get the point. Um, I almost kind of maybe potentially broke the server. And that is because I was just standing up there if K, it was working well, um, but all of the storage actually, well, got full. Meaning there was a ton of items up there by the minecarts and that caused significant amount of lag. Now all those items have despawned, but before I can actually use this thing again, we need to clean this place up a little bit and install a um, an item sorter. So let's get to work, shall we? I need to remove this really quickly and remove this ladder right here to make space. And then we will just break this and I just gonna throw that out there. Bye bye. Now my issue is of course that I already have a ton of items in here so I need to empty all these chests. Um, yeah, this is not gonna be a fun experience, let me tell you. I have all the items that I need in this shulker box as well by the way, so this is all that we need. It did cost me a lot of diamonds to get the iron for the harpers, but uh, we should be good. So now I think I just need to start tearing down this part of the farm here. I know that I'm losing all the gold that I currently have stored, but, um, yep, this is a lot of items, and that should be all the heads, as well as all the ingots that we have here. Um, so yeah, now I just need to wait for all this to despawn, and we can begin the process of baking the sorter. Moments later. And just like that, we now have a sorting system for the, ow, for the gold farm. So let me just quickly try and run through what is going on so it is somewhat understandable, maybe. All right, so before these hoppers right here, they just led into some chests, right? Well, now they lead into hoppers, which all direct down to this hopper right here in the middle. If you're wondering why there's composters, that is to reduce the lag. But yes, yeah, so all the items run through this hopper down into this one, which then runs into this one. Now, thanks to this redstone mechanism back here, the items are now getting filtered through. So the items first hit this hopper, and then this hopper is trying to pull out the items from that hopper if the item can fit in this hopper right here. So either it's a gold ingot or it's cobblestone. The ideal thing would be to have an item and rename it in an anvil, but because we won't get any cobblestone from the pigland drops, this is totally fine. And this process keeps happening. If it can't fit in this hopper, it goes on to this one, which this one then tries to pull the items from that, and it continues all the way over to this chest right here. And this chest is basically where all of the armor and swords will land, and it will then get processed down into these blast furnaces right here, which is fueled with coal. And then out here, the output will be taken all the way over into the chest of nuggets. I hope that explanation made a little bit of sense. If you are interested in building this, I will leave a link down in the description for the tutorial that I followed. But in a way, long story short, we now have a fully functional and working item sorter. So as you can see, we have nuggets, uh, sorry, ingots, a lot of nuggets, rotten flesh, and zombified piglin heads. I did run out of composters though, but uh, it's fine, it's fine. So with that out of the way, we can now head back home and do some more, some of the more important stuff for this episode, of which I have actually done a lot of progress for. Um, I, I think, I don't know, Endivar is, maybe his presence is doing something because I was sitting here at like 5 a.m. in the morning and I and I, I just worked, I, I accidentally did progress. <laughs> Not only did I fill four shulker boxes with stuff for today's episode, I also, down in my mind, managed to excavate a huge area. That, that's one of the false shulker boxes I was talking about. Yep. Yeah. I've done some work. Now, in today's episode, we will focusing, be focusing mainly on the marketplace and finishing the storage barn that we made in the last episode. But before we get to the storage barn, I think the first thing that we actually need to do is head back down into the mine and work on the projects down there because they will be able to run while we're finishing the storage barn and then hopefully, uh, yeah, we will have some stuff down here. I don't know, but I, I wasn't really planning this season on living underground, but I, I'm having a little bit of an idea with this place. And I, I think 
I think this is going to develop into something bigger. But anyways, I want to make two farms down here, down here on the ground. This is one of them which I've kind of marked out. And the other one is related to the geode because it is the geode. I want to sell items made from the geode and also I want to sell the geode crystals themselves in my shop. So I want to make some sort of farm with this. And by that I mean basically remove all other blocks and the geode, uh, these things right here and then just leave it. Because from what I've done of research, there's no really good way of farming these uh, geode what are they called? Buds? I, I don't know what this block's called. I'm gonna call it the geode core. But yeah, from my research, there's no really proper way of mining this. So what I'm going to do instead is I'll be making a fancy room around this geode. And yeah, it's gonna look cool when I'm done. Now, just before I begin on that project, the other farm that I want to make is a glow squid farm because I want to sell glow ink sacks. So I thought, you know what, I need to make a farm of this. So this is the area I've marked out, though I will be moving it. I just had to see how big this thing actually was. It's a 13 by 13 area. Not too bad, uh, but I will be moving it probably down there a little bit further. But these are all the materials that I will be needing for it, or pretty much anyway. Now the geode, I will be needing some extra building materials. But that is a good starting point of me showing you the other two chocolate boxes which I've made. You see, in my marketplace, I am currently selling deep slate. Well, I want to sell a bunch of other different stones for the people that are lazy to get them like me. But I've gathered a bunch of diorite, a bunch of tough granite, as well as the smooth basalt around the geode. We will be getting more and andesite. I have also mined a bunch of deep slate, but I will be getting that once we are done building the geode because I actually need a lot of it for that build. All right, those are all the resources. I will also be removing all of this, which isn't any of the geode cores here. So I will be removing all of that. And yeah, with all that done and said, let's get to work. Oh, that one grew. Nice. And there we go. The room has now been fully constructed. I, I'm actually pretty happy with how this turned out. Pretty simple. All of this is basically just deep slate. Then we have these pillars that goes up and arches a little bit up there. We have these lanterns, which give a huge amount of light. And then we have the scaffolding, which is intentional. It is going to stay here because I will be using it to be able to properly be able to, to, uh, to climb this thing. And well, mining all the amethyst. Speaking of which, there is a lot. And I actually need some for the next project. So I might as well give this a little bit of a test. I don't think I'll mine all of it, but all of the stuff that is fully grown, I might as well give a shot. Now I was thinking of making a water collection system, which I might add in the future, but for now I think this works just fine. So how much did we get out of that? I obviously didn't take all of them. But just from these few, I have pretty much, wait for it, yeah, pretty much five stacks and boom, six stacks and a bit, which is absolutely amazing. Now I haven't actually done the tunnel here. I will be doing that at another time. But speaking about time, it's time that we move on to the next project, which is going to be the Glow Squid Ink Sack Farm, which I has, should have all of the stuff that we need for this right here in the shulker box. And I've done a little bit of calculation because it is going to be a little bit tall, but it should fit in right here. Eventually I want to add some walls here that then leads down to this path. So everything in here should work just fine. Now I will need to do some excavation and work here, but thanks to the beacon, that should only take a few seconds. All right, the area has been dug out. This is good enough. I don't need to replace the floor here because we actually won't get to see this at all. 
We just need to do some setting up and then we will be done with it. What I need to set up now is the rails. This will basically be the collection system, right? So what I need to do is actually this first one already. Gotta have a redstone torch and then cover it up, powered rail. And then we follow up with normal rails going all the way over here. And we add a powered one and under that powered rail, we then need to place a, eh, oh my keypads are off. <laughs> need to add a redstone torch and then block it back up and then we basically snake back around add another powered rail torch block powered rail we add another one so one two three four five blocks in between just gotta remember the rest of the torch otherwise this will not work and then we snake it around like so what might actually be beneficial is digging up this entire row first, placing all the torches down at once. We won't be needing to do this here because we will have another powered rail placed right there. And there we go. Rail system is perfectly in place. Now over here at this specific powered rail, we need to do a little bit of redstone magic, but it is pretty simple. So what I gotta do is break this block and then place a temporary block, place a hopper facing into that block, dig down a little bit because then we will be placing a double chest like so, and then another double chest with a hopper facing into that chest. And all we gotta do is place a block there, a lever here, turn it on, a comparator facing outwards like that from the hopper, a redstone torch under that block, and then a redstone repeater like that. And of course, can't forget to place down back the powered rail. So what this system should do is when we have the harbor minecart driving back and forth, collecting items from the farm because we will have magma blocks right here, it should stop and stay stopped until there's nothing left in the harbor. So let us give that a quick shot. So if I take this and let's say I drop a bunch of stuff here on the rail, I, well, gotta not pick it up. That's one thing. Yep, gotta put that and then the hopper minecart should eventually, it should pick it all up and then it eventually should stop here and it shouldn't continue until it has unloaded the whole payload. And there we go, it stops and it doesn't continue. My bad, this lever should be facing, yeah, it should be facing the other, other way. Whoopsie, let's, uh, let's try that again, shall we? So if I just stop it, give it a few blocks, give it a kick to get going. So now you can see this is always on until it hits, it stops, and it should repower, and off it goes. And that is all we had to do down here. So this basically is kind of our maintenance lever. If we need to go down here, repair something, if something messes up, this is the lever. So I can actually turn this off while we're building this, and the minecart will stop right there until I turn it back on. This is, of course, also the place where we will be getting the glow ink sack from the farm. The next thing I now need to do is to take this magma, take these magma blocks, and I need to place them on top of the rails like so. Now I gotta shift. Actually, it was suggested that I could use um, frost walker or a potion effect i believe it was to negate the uh, the magma the magma block damage which thank you very much for the feedback thank you to all of you who give me suggestions and feedback by the way but anyways i'll just finish up this and i'll be right back and there we go that is the magma blocks done the next thing i need to do is i need to take any kind of uh, stone related blocks so stone and the side diorite i believe works as well we need to take one of those and we need to go up a block and place the first one down and this is just my temporary blocks and then i need to do alternate them like this so we have one space between each wall and between themselves and then we can go ahead and remove this dirt and i basically need to keep making this checker pattern of block space block space block and those are the final ones and i can get rid of all my temporary blocks we are rapidly nearing completion the next thing that i need to do is now take the spruce fence gate fence spruce fence gate fence bleh spruce fence gates we need to place temporary blocks and a block and then place the fence gates facing outwards like this and then i can remove the dirt block after that ow and then open them basically what we will have here is a water source going flowing from the top down here and the glow squids will spawn inside this water and these just prevent the water from, from flowing out but also when they're open you can walk through them so the glow squid can easily fall down to the magma blocks and die and we can collect 
there. Ink sacs. That is pretty much how that goes. And there we go. That is the final fence gates placed down. I can now go ahead and remove all these temporary blocks. Now what I just realized is that my roof is actually a little bit too low. This part on the inside here. So I will go ahead and raise it up just a little bit. All right, the roof has now been raised. What I need to do now is I need to grab these slabs and then I need to stand on this block and break one and then place a slab right up there. And I need to do that for all of these blocks right here. And all the slabs have now been put in place. Now, before we go ahead and place in the water, I think it would be wise to fill in the walls first, which for these two walls right here, I want it to be deep slate brick like so. And what I think I want to do is I want to bring this down by one. Oh, oh boy, like so. And then raise this one a little bit as well. And then take this tinted glass that I have and fill it in. And as you can see, as I place this in, the room is getting darker and darker, which is exactly what we want. Now, a few interesting things to know about the glow squid. The normal mob cap doesn't affect them. So say if you have, you can, you can basically have caves and whatnot around you and it doesn't affect the rate the glow squid spawn in. But what does affect this is other pockets of water in the nearby area. So that right there could take up a space for a glow squid. So instead of spawning in here, it might spawn in there. So that is something to keep in mind. What I also really quickly want to do at these torches is place some spruce logs like so. And yeah, this place is not fully uh, secure yet. So if we get a, cre a creeper dropping on us, well, don't be too surprised. All right, not too bad at all. I should say as well, I don't remember, but uh, the glow, this, uh, the light level in here in this farm needs to be quite low. I don't remember exactly what light level, but I just know that we don't want all this light coming in there. All right, then the quickest thing will be if I quickly make an infinite water source and I might as well steal the one over here and then just go ahead and fill in all of these. So I want to right click it right on the slab. And as you can see, it creates a nice flow of water. Just got to go ahead and do this on all of the slabs. And I'm actually going to take off my elytra for this because having that glide effect is going to be quite annoying. And that is all the water in place. I can now close this up. There we go. The textures are a little bit bugged, but you can see that we have water in here. I'm actually going to go ahead and turn on the minecart because we do have a few loose blocks, I think, on the magma. But that is pretty much the farm. Well, almost done. The final thing that we now need to do is make the AFK area, which we need to make 30 blocks from the center block right there. So I have the coordinates noted down. I'm actually going to go ahead and take away this tinted glass right here. I'm going to put full blocks on right there. I'm going to go ahead and make a bunch of ladders. So this is the center block right here. And I basically need to go up to Y. Oh dear. Haha. <laughs> I think I stopped it. <laughs> I need to go up to Y level um, 38. And these these pockets of water are what we want to eliminate in the nearby area. So I might have to go through this cave system and make sure that we don't have any. But basically, I just need to now yeah, make a ladder going up. And keep in mind, you have to stand on this on the center block. So if I place the ladder on the center block and stand here, I wouldn't be on the center block, if that makes any sense. And we have arrived, pretty much. So this is a center block. And I'm at Y level 38 now, which is exactly where I want to be. And yeah, this is pretty much the AFK spot. Now I will probably make this tunnel look a lot nicer, of course, because yeah, right now it's not looking too great. And I doubt it, but let's see. Yeah, we haven't gotten any glow squid insect just yet. Keep in mind though, look at that. That one spawned on that uh, water source. So that's a prime example for why we don't want these water sources around here because this glow squid could have spawned in our farm instead. So we want to take that water away so that that glow squid spawns in our farm. And I cut the head. <laughs> it works perfectly with the armor and my skin. But yeah, that's a prime example of how the glowing sack farm will work. So I need to get rid of all this water stuff. Also the water from over here. My only issue right now is that there are quite big pools like right here, though this right here is pretty well lit up. So 
well, the other place was as well. So I think, yeah, I think I will have to block this up. But this is my biggest concern and issue right now. This huge area right here. I won't be able to drain this. So I will just hope that the farm um, still works well enough. Yeah, this is a pretty big area. I may need to fix this with sponges at some point, emptying this whole thing. Because, yeah, it's pretty big and it is within the vicinity. So we might have to do something about that, but not now. What I want to do now is just AFK for maybe like 30 minutes or so, an hour. We'll see. I'll uh, have replay mod on so we can see what's going on inside the farm while I'm AFK. And we can see how well it works. Now, prepare to be not so amazed. Oh, I forgot I had this thing on. Because, like I said, there will be water places around us so which will have a negative effect but we can see how well it works but also maybe how bad it works but i think this place down here is starting to come along pretty nicely you know but anyways i'm gonna afk now and then after that afk session we will move on then we can finish off the storage barn and then we can finish off with the final project for today's episode which will be to restock the marketplace and also do something special with it. But for now, I'm gonna actually go back down because I want to make a trapdoor, but I'll see you after an hour or so. Well, this isn't very promising now, is it? Now, there's, a, there's an explanation, I think. Uh, I forgot I had this head on. I've AFK'd here for quite a while and I've actually had multiple attempts at this and this thing is not working, but I think I know why. So I'm in replay mode right now, and I am in here to show you exactly what is going on because I was quite confused. So if I unpause it, as you can see, nothing happens in here. You can see my name up there, but if we go over here, out through the walls here, and just wait a little bit, you can see that we actually have glow squid spawning in this cave, and I've done multiple attempts, and they spawn a lot in this area. So I thought, all right, I'll just go ahead and add a bunch of light sources. Right? Because this is what the Minecraft wiki says. In Java edition, schools of 2 to 4 glow squid spawn underwater below sea level at Y30 in total darkness and where there is a block with base stone oval tag, i.e. stone, deep slate, and aside, etc. But notice it says in total darkness, meaning a light level of 0. So I thought, alright, I'll just go ahead and add a bunch of light in there. Which I did. Which you can see right here, I gathered a bunch of glowstone and, well, I placed them in this entire cave system right here. Um, and yeah, the area is well lit up and they shouldn't spawn according to that specific rule. Only problem is, they do. So I'm in another replay file. This was after I've added all the, all the glowstone, as you can see. If we speed it up here and give it a little bit, you will see that they are still spawning, even though... The light level is way above zero. And I've done a little bit of research and it appears that it is a bug in Minecraft at the moment, which is unfortunate because this means that this has pretty much become, well, useless. Unless I get a bunch of sponges and then clear out the, the water from those areas. But I also saw that there was a pretty big ravine over in this area that spawned a bunch of them as well. So for now, I think I'm just going to leave this and I will fix the water issue in between episodes. And hopefully in the next episode, we can have this thing up and running. But um, yeah, this is not... <laughs> <laughs> That's not good enough. But regardless, we have it here. Hopefully it will work eventually. And like I said, I'll just get a bunch of sponges and clear out the water that way. Then the squids will have no place else to spawn but here. I should show one final thing that I actually changed, and that is the roof height. If I take some blocks here, you can see that it is one, two, three, four blocks away from the stone instead of five. Before it was five. This is the source block right here. So one, two, three, four right here, and then the fifth block is the stone. Because according to the wiki, it says it will spawn where there is a block with a stone, so in this case, stone, less than five blocks below the spawning place, and the spawning place is this slab right here, so one, two, three, four. And then fifth block is the stone, so that should work just fine. And I did actually see one glow squid spawn in there, which I showed you the ink sack from. So it does work. The glow squid are just spawning elsewhere. So I will have to deal with that but for now, we have it built. But let us get into cover and start working on the storage barn in the rain. This is going to be fun. So here is a bunch of materials and resources. And it's really not that complicated, to be honest. First things first, though, I will be digging out this 
uh, floor right here and replacing it with a spruce floor and then we will be installing the redstone. It's really simple redstone I'll show you in just a moment. Alright, the floor has been placed down and we can actually now begin. So, first thing we gotta do is count three blocks over and then uh, place down, well, remove these because this will have a chest and also a place for a shulker box because I want to be able to place a shulker box down and then empty the shulker box into the rest of the story system. What I then want to do is make a little bit of a, of a separator here and then place double chests all the way down this line and then at the corner. So I gotta leave a three gap right there and I'll leave an ender chest right there because that just fits and then complete the cycle over here. Perfect. It appears that I made way too many chests, but that's fine. So what we gotta do is we gotta have two hoppers, one going into the other and one pointing outwards. Then we will need a dropper pointing this way and a comparator pointing out from that hopper into a repeater extended fully. Then we put redstone here, place a block, redstone, and then we go up three blocks for like so. And then over here we have a dropper pointing up and over and another block here and then the redstone then feeds into this dropper right there. Rem remember, these are not dispensers, these are droppers, very important. Then we take a hopper, point it into the chest here and another hopper pointing, pointing this way. And that is pretty much the setup. Then I repeat this like so. So placing these first is probably going to be the easiest thing to do. And then we connect them all up with the hoppers like so. And then because we have no chests here, we can actually remove these and place these back over here. And same with this. And then we all we gotta do is continue this hopper all the way over into this dropper right here. Complete this like so. Then we continue it over here. And again, we just combine it like so. And the final one, just like that. But for this final one, all we gotta do is place a hopper that. We won't place a, par a hopper pointing that way. I think that is going to work, if I've understood how this works correctly. And that is all the hoppers in place. So basically what will happen here is we will have a chest on the top right here. When we put items into this, it will get put into this dropper, which this basically makes it so it clicks with a set interval, which pushes the item through these hoppers. So what I need to do now is pretty much set up these chests. So say I want a locks chest. This is my locks chest. Here we have oak, and then I fill out the oak like that. And if I then put spruce planks into this chest, they will automatically start appearing in here. Now we are not quite done setting up just yet we are still missing some vital parts. Next to the harpers, what we need to do is place a block, repeater, and where there are droppers, dust, block, dust. So again, by the harpers, there, by the droppers, dust. And this needs to be repeated all the way around. Now on this spot right here, what I gotta do is simply continue it over here and then have a block here and then feed it over here and place another repeater right there in the receiving end. So to clarify, redstone, plank, redstone, block, 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 repeater, dust, dust, and then block, repeater, block over, dust, dust, repeater, and connect it. Pretty simple, actually. And there we go. That should be, I believe, everything working. So if I now take in, uh, if I put in some spruce planks here, what we should see is this happening. So all the droppers click pretty much at once. And oh yeah, I forgot a very important part and that is to have another repeater here and a piece of redstone dust leading from that repeater into this comparator right there. Now, if I place in some planks here, it will pulse with an interval throughout all of them. And as you can see, we will now have planks appearing in this chest. The only issue is it can be a bit loud. But it's all right. Now to reduce lag, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place composters on top of these harbors right here. So let's say this chest right here, right? Let's say that is only meant for cobblestone and then this will be meant for spruce pipe. So if I put in these items right here, it will skip this chest and put it in here. So this way I can have one chest for planks and then I have all the different plank types and then it will basically, if there's an item that fits in any of these chests, it will put it in that chest or it will go all the way around 
and hit this chest, which will just be empty for any overflow items. Now, because I added a stack in here, it's actually going to take a little while. So I'm actually just going to take that out. And as you can see, the system then stopped. There we go. Now, the way the system is, there will be things usually at all times in here. So you can see there's a spruce plank, but that's totally fine. When the system runs next time, it will just get pushed along until it eventually reaches there or any of the other destinations. And that is pretty much it. Now all I gotta do is decorate this room to be a little bit nicer. And then I also have some item frames here. But I think what I wanna do is place some stairs like this above all of the chests so we don't see any of that redstone stuff in the background, just like that. And I can then place item frames above the chests showing what is in them. And I think I do want to have a door so I can get back here. So a little bit of a maintenance entrance right there. And I will replace these with normal logs. All right, looking much better. All I want to get now is to get some glowstone to put in here. And I think some warped wood, maybe, or something else. Is that too much, Bruce? I don't think so. I think that, I think that, I like that actually. And there we go. I think I'm, I'm actually really happy with this. I am actually really happy with this space. Now all I need to do is basically just put in what I want to be where. So I will probably go logs, planks, stone, something else, something else, something else, something else until everything is pretty much full. But this I will be doing in between episodes because that's just going to take way too long. We still have some stuff that we want to do. So in theory, after I've done a project, I should be able to place this shulker box right there and it should sort out automatically. But I'm going to leave that there and the crafting table, I'm going to... Yeah, yeah, I, have, I have so many of them. You know what? I don't care. I think in another episode, I will actually be making some storage silos, some storage silos down here just for the amount of blocks that we get from mining. So cobblestone, stone, etc. But that isn't why I'm down here. I'm down here because of this, because I am quite annoyed that this thing isn't working fully as it should. So I'm going to do something about it because I need this in order to complete this video because I have plans. I need I need to do them. I need this thing to work. So so there's only one thing left to do. Armed with coordinates from Amradon, 11 buckets of milk and a diamond hoe, I set out to raid an ocean monument to get sponges. I had to fight two guardians to get through to the sponge farm. But once I did, I grabbed it all and went back home. But this wasn't even the hard part. Now came the task of draining the water ravines and caves in the area around my my farm, which I did. I drained multiple water ravines in the nearby area as well as caves that would have an effect on my glow squid farm. This took a long time, but once I was done, the result finally started to pay off. And I mean it, this has really paid off a lot. I've been AFK for maybe like an hour, maybe like an hour and a half, plus I have been flying around here doing a bunch of work. And well, five stacks at 17, that is not bad at all. This thing could be a whole lot more effective. I can always do more to search through caves and whatnot to remove tiny bits of water, but for now, this works. Now, when I drained all the ravines and the caves, I also got a bunch of glow exact. Plus, I've been testing this multiple times, so in total, we have quite a lot of glowing sacks. And my amethyst geode also had been fully grown out uh, from the crystals, so I went ahead and found it all and. We got a lot. I haven't even converted all the amethyst clusters yet, but this is all the stuff that we got. Well, except for that. Disregard this stack right here, but this is all that we got. I love it. So now I'm gonna take this Jalka box and we're gonna head to the surface and set up the marketplace. But before we do that, I just want to show you this right here. I found out that there is a deep slate cave area right underneath me this whole time. Look at this. It is really huge. I went through here and removed a bunch of water sources. So that's really cool. But I also discovered that tough this block right here is actually really easy to get once you're down here. There are huge patches of this and they're actually quite frequent, which is amazing. So that is why you see that big hole over there. I went in and mined a whole patch of this and now I have a lot, which is perfect because I will need it for the shop. So with everything, we now have everything that we need to improve the marketplace and do that secret plan I have been talking about the whole episode. The two places that I want to populate today will be this area and this area. And first thing I want to do is actually remove the front here so it is easy to get in and get access to the goodies that are inside. And so this will be the stone place. Place, which will actually get a name now, the Rocky Bottom. Get it? Rock, bottom, 
rocks. Yeah, that's the best I could think of. And here we have all the prizes and also the secret, some of the secret stuff that we will be doing in a moment. But first I want to take all of this stuff because these are all the blocks that we will be selling and we need to put them in here. I've already set the prices for them. And there we go, we'll be selling Cobble Deep Slate, Stone, Diorite, Granite, Andesite, Tough and Smooth Basalt, all at a very cheap price. Now we used to sell Deep Slate over here, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and take all the Deep Slate from this one and move it into the new shop as well. And that is pretty much this shop done. I just want to maybe add a few path blocks in here just to make it look like you could actually, that there's actually traffic in here or something. I don't know, does that look good? Yeah, that's fine. Now this one over here, I don't have a name for it. I just know that I want the word exotic in there because this will be the shop where we sell our glowing sacks, amethyst and stuff like that. So if you have any suggestions, please do put them down below in the comments. So I have all the items right here. This is gonna be blocks of amethyst, amethyst clusters, and finally glowing sacks. And there we go. The shops have now been given an upgrade. So we have the rock bottom here with all the different stone types and we have the unnamed shop yet with a bunch of amethyst and also of course the glow ink sacks. Now it is time for the little special thing that I have been planning. You see if you want a successful business you need to do advertising. Advertising, advertising, advertising. Which is why I'm gonna paint these yellow chocolate boxes yellow because yellow is usually the color for advertising. And in each shulker box, I'm gonna put some special items. All right, so there we go. The shulker boxes have now been loaded with things from every chest from this marketplace. Now I'm gonna take these shulker boxes and I'm gonna deliver them to three different people. One is a close neighbor of mine. The first person on the list is Kit, whose base is, wow, really coming along. I like how this place is looking. Should I be concerned that Kit has a head of Scorpius? You know what, I'm not gonna question it. I will be leaving his chocolate box right here and I'm gonna take an iron frame. And of course, I haven't shown you what is actually in these books. So let's give it a read. Greetings, future customer. We congratulate you for being chosen to receive the Shulker goodie bag. This bag contains a bunch of items from Binary's Market, trademark, still working on the name. Everything you see here is available for you to buy at extremely cheap prices. Not only that, this book acts as a coupon. Simply trade this book for any stack of item you want from Binary's Market. TM, we can't wait to see you at the market. What are you waiting for? We're just one firework away. And there we go. Perfect. On to the next person. And that is Spirit with his nice wood cabin in the woods. That didn't even make any sense. Wood cabin in the woods. Regardless, I'm gonna leave his package right here. There we go. And on to the final person on the list, Scorpius, who seems to be making an entire city. <laughs> Whoa, I love this. Now my que- wait, hold up. Standing on this roof and looking out in the city, kind of feel like Batman. I, fe I feel like the city needs, needs, a, needs a hero. Maybe that will be for another time. I don't know where I should leave his- I, I don't even know where he lives in, in all these buildings. So I'm just gonna put it right here in the middle of the street. Boom. Advertising complete. Oh dear. What happened here? How did a fire just, there's no lava. I shall save the day. I think that's all of them. And as the sun is setting, I guess the city needed a hero after all. And I was the chosen one. So in general, this episode has been longer than usual, but we got a lot of stuff done. Storage bound complete. I just need to move the items in. We got two farms done down in the mine. All is good. <laughs> but anyways, that's gonna conclude this episode. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.